All right, guys, in the the last step, we're going to use that part that we have created in the, pa in the past videos. We're going to use that to create an assembly. Now, typically when we do this, um, you know, at, at our one of our locations, we have you open up kind of a half completed assembly and we work from there. But because, you know, we don't really have access to you to download files, we don't want to go through that. I'm going to show you how to build a quick assembly uh, based on just this component. So we're basically going to put two of these components together. So let, let's get into it and let me show you how you can use this part to uh, create an assembly. So moving on over, right, we're looking at the part and we do the same process as we did when we were creating the drawing. So in that little drop down next to new, there's make assembly from part assembly. And what you'll, some of you will notice um, is that if you're hovering over in the graphics area, you will get a preview. Um, at this point in time, just because I'm recording my screen here, I, I, I don't necessarily see it here. But what you want to do is you do not want to place your part in the graphics area. Now that may sound strange, but what happens is that when you place it in the graphics area, the origin of your part and the origin of the assembly don't actually line up. So you might have your origin over here and your part over here with your origin or with the origin of that part so that it's like way off from the center or the, the origin of the assembly. So that it, it's just really strange how it works. Like you'll have a front plane for your assembly here and your parts way over in, way over out in space. So we don't want that. So what you do is you select on the part that you want in either open documents or you browse to find that part and then you just hit the green check mark. And then that comes in. And what you'll notice is if we look in our feature tree here, there's an F and that means fixed. So that very first component that we bring into the assembly is fixed. It, you cannot move it, you cannot change it. So um, typically we always say uh, your very first uh, part that you insert into the assembly is gonna be something that's not really gonna change much, not gonna be reoriented. Like if you're building a like a desktop computer, for example, right? You don't want to put in a small little chip as being your first thing. You typically want that outside outside box to be your first part just because it makes the most sense. Right? So now what we'll do is we'll insert another one of these in and we'll kind of attach it to the bottom side of this. So to do so, we can do it two different ways. Because we already have this part in this assembly, we can do a control click drag from the feature tree and it essentially gives us another one. But typically, if you you know if you if you don't have two or multiples of the same part, we'll just say insert components, and then we can go into browse. And you'll notice that it does. Um, if you have any open documents, you will see it here. But you can always browse and just find the uh, the part that you're looking for. So in this case, I'm just going to say part one, and then we well, we actually do want to drop the additional ones in the graphics area. So. What I always say is before I uh, put this in place, we would do uh, mates. But what I do before that is I try and get it kind of in the orientation that it wants. Because if I were to say that I want this bottom face to be aligned with this bottom face, because it's in this orientation, it's just going to go the shortest distance and it's not actually going to flip it around and, and mate together like that. So. What we can do is if you're hovering over the part and you hold down on your right click and then wrote and then move your mouse, it actually rotates just that component. So I'm going to try and get this kind of in the orientation. Really, I just want it upside down. Now, um, we can actually create mates in SolidWorks very similar to how we do relations in sketches. We can just do control select between multiple faces and it will give us the uh, an option to specify our mate similar to how the relations work in SolidWorks or in sketching I mean. But what I like to do is I like to use the actual mate tool because based on your selections it will help you identify which mate's going to be uh, the most efficient or, or the mate that you should use. So let me show you that. So if we click on the mate tool, it's also, I think I have it on uh, my mouse gesture, so up. And what we do is we just make those two selections 
and you'll see it automatically moves it over. It gives me the mate that it thinks that I should use, and then we can just hit OK. Right, so now we just have to kind of align this together. So we can do it a few different ways. Um, I might start with this, this face and this face, and you can see it kind of locks those two together. And then I'm going to say this face and this face. Right? So literally, it, it's like putting Legos together. You kind of just specify faces that you want to be attached together, and it will automatically do that stuff for us. So it makes it pretty easy on selection, so it's not overly complicated. Right? So if you had more components to bring in, let me show you how we might do that. So I'm going to insert a subassembly. All right, so I have this inserted, and what we can do is I can, I'm just going to do a nice little quick control select, and you can see that there's a small little like dotted box around this specific mate that it thinks we should use. So when you're not in the mate tool, it doesn't necessarily give you everything that you're looking for, but we can do that, and then we can kind of just drag this through. So you may be wondering, you know, how does it handle collisions? Well, you know, if I drag that kind of grab assembly through those other parts, it's, it's going to hit and run into each other, and it's not going to be a problem. But we can turn on or enable some collision detection so that you can actually measure um, maybe some differences as, as far as, you know, where it's going to hit and to, to know, uh, you know, how big things are, how things are going to move. So let me show you that. So if we go into move component, we can turn on collision detection. I say check between all components, stop at collision. So what we can do is move this and you can see as I stop, I know it's really hard to see, but it does actually highlight those faces blue. So what we could do is we could run it in here and then we could measure the distance of certain things and then we can go the complete opposite way and stop and see where that contacts. We could also apply a, a limit mate so that it would only move that distance. And let me show you how we do that. So we'll go into, uh, actually before we do that, let me just do a measurement from that value or from that face to this face. And we are going to say that the normal distance is 6.72 inches or 6.7 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say mate I'm going to go into my advanced mates and I'm going to say a limit distance mate. So I'm going to say this face and this face. And I'm going to say one millimeter because we got that fillet there. So we're going to say the minimum value is one millimeter and the maximum value is 6.72 inches. Now you'll notice that be, even though it's in millimeters, I, I measured it in inches just because that's how mine was set up. But if I, even if I type in 6.72 inches, it completely converts it over to millimeters for me. So we don't have to do conversions by ourselves. And you can see, as I go to move this, it's now locking between them. Now, some other things that we can, that we can do in an assembly um, are something like an exploded view. So to do an exploded view, select on the parts that you want and move it. And then once we're done, you know, once you go through and create all of your steps, you can just right click on the top level assembly in your feature tree and you can say collapse, but you can also do an animate collapse as well. So if you go through and, and create multiple different steps, you can actually animate that. And then when you're done, you can actually save the animation out as an AVI MP4 or something like that. Now, some of the last features that I want to show you is if we go into the Evaluate tab, we do have interference detection. So we can calculate and it shows us all the interferences in this assembly. So whoever, whoever created this assembly um, definitely needs to sit through some of our training classes because we've got a whole lot of interferences. Um, you can even say treat coincident as interferences because if you do have some tolerances in there um, or you're leaving some leaving some room for paint, anodizing, powder coating, you know, anything that is touching, we might want to, uh, you know, treat that as an interference as well. But you can see, you know, if we do have interferences, that's something that, you know, you might not see as you're building it. So it's nice to, to quickly go in and identify if there's any uh, interferences. We can take a look at hole alignment. So if there's any holes that are misaligned, instead of catching those uh, as you're manufacturing them, you know, we can catch them here. Even if they're off by, 
you know, a quarter of an inch or even an eighth of an inch, we will be able to identify it with, with the software, with that whole alignment tool. And that might not be something that you would actually notice in the software itself. So there are a lot of other tools that are found within the assembly functions, and I'm not really going to get into those today. But you know, we kind of scratched the surface of putting, you know, your your assembly together. If you if you have some of these components, you can kind of put 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 your parts together and and see if you have any interferences or stuff like that. Um, so if you would like more information on assemblies, you know, please please let us know. Um, otherwise, you know that that really concludes our our training or, or our test drive session for these videos. Um, there will be another video at uh, after this that just kind of talks about some of the other hands-on test drives that we do offer in some of our facilities. So please check that out. And if you have any questions, uh, let us know. And, and I hope you enjoyed these, these training videos. Thank you.